In 2006, Jan Wan was on top of the world. A longtime reporter and columnist with the Globe and Mail, Wan watched her world unravel after she wrote about the Dawson College shooting. The Montreal native, who still has family in that city, pondered why three high-profile shootings in Canada had all taken place in Quebec. While noting that all three crimes were committed by mentally disturbed people, she also said this. But what is also true is that in all three cases, the perpetrator was not pure lin, the argot for a pure francophone. Elsewhere, to talk of racial purity is repugnant, not in Quebec. Juan's column was called a disgrace by Quebec Premier Jean Charest, denounced by Prime Minister Stephen Harper on the floor of the House of Commons, and even rebuked by her own editor in the pages of the Globe and Mail. Jan Juan joins me now to talk about this and her new book, Out of the Blue. Jan, your book is a memoir that deals with the depression you experience. So why don't you pick up the story there? What happened to you in the days and weeks after this column and, and everything that went into this book? I got a lot of racist emails. I got uh, caricatured in the Quebec newspapers in a way that I considered racist. But none of that bothered me as much as the failure of my newspaper to stand behind the story. They had edited it, they had encouraged me, and they published it. And when they didn't back me, I really, that's when I started to fall apart. And I fell into a deep clinical depression. And they didn't believe me, and they cut off my sick pay, and eventually they fired me. They fired you for dealing with depression, which is a serious mental health issue that hundreds of thousands of Canadians deal with each and every year. One in five Canadians. One in five. Right, and twice as many women as men. So it's a huge problem. I didn't know anything about it when it happened to me. And that's why I wrote my book, Out of the Blue, because I wanted people to understand what depression is, that it can be treated, especially a workplace depression, which is mm, triggered by a specific event, that it can be treated, and that afterwards you can be very strong and healthy and happy afterwards. Well, I want to get back to the Quebec stuff in a moment, but let's talk about the mental health issues since we're there right now. Uh, You've done a lot of research, and it shows up in the book, along with some great humor. Uh, the humor that appeared in your columns for years shows up in the book, despite the fact that you're talking about uh, depression. There is a push on for mental health now. There is, uh, here in Ottawa, the Ottawa Senator's captain, Daniel Alfredson, along with a lot of the other players, have done public service announcements. They're trying to raise awareness of the issue. From what you found, if you could distill it, and, and I do recommend people that... They, they do pick up the book and they do read it. What would you say to people who are experiencing this right now and feel alone? Well, I'd like them to know that they're not alone and that it's treatable and that our medical system can help you and that antidepressants often work. It's a little bit hard to find the right one at first, but stick with it. They're not addictive. They don't change your personality permanently. They get you out of the deep depression. So I want people to just be aware of it. And personally, I would like to end the stigma about depression. Now, for me, as a journalist who works with my brain, although some people would say, no, you don't, <laughs> uh, it's very um, embarrassing to talk about having a mental illness. And I felt that my own personal embarrassment was secondary to the importance of the story. And that's why I really wanted to talk about this. I think that People who are employees don't talk about this. We have the athletes who are superstars. We have celebrities like Margaret Trudeau. But we don't have an ordinary employee like myself who wants to talk about it. How did the company treat me? How did the insurance company treat me when I was depressed? And I want people to know about that. All right. I want to jump back before we're out of time to the Quebec issue. You are a Quebecer, born and raised in Montreal. Um, you poke fun at yourself throughout the book. You talk about... Uh, Things such as you say, look, I'm Asian, I, I can't pass up sales, <laughs> as you talk about your Asian heritage, and this is part of the humor that shows up. So you, you're talking about ethnicity, about your own self. Mm -hmm. But when you wrote about Quebec, there was such a backlash that it's as if you can't criticize Quebec. Do you think that the reaction would have been different if what you wrote about Quebec had been published in a Quebec paper rather than the Toronto Globe and Mail? No, I don't think it's where I published it. I think it's what I said. And I think that Quebec is a very special case in Canada because of all these decades of um, separatist and uh, sovereigntist agenda. People are afraid to talk. You know, we had um, our country hung in the balance uh, during the referendum, and people are very leery about speaking out. But I feel as a journalist, 
that's my job. I have to say things that people are thinking but don't want to say out loud. And so I've never shied away from that. And, uh, but I think the reaction to it sort of proved my point, which is that it's really hard to be a minority in Quebec. My family has been there for over 100 years, and yet I was told, go back to China. Yeah, you, your family, uh, in fact, at one point owned how many restaurants in Montreal? I, I remember five. the main one. Yeah, five. Bill Wong's was the one, and they... Uh, a very famous restaurant in, in Montreal. In fact, uh, the sovereigntists called for a boycott of my family's restaurant. During this period, they accused us of serving cat meat disguised as chicken. They called for a boycott, and my family's business did go under a few months later. So there was a severe impact on my family. And, and, and as you say, despite your family being in Quebec for 100 years, you were told, go back to China. Right. Do you think that Quebec will change, or is this insular uh, look? And we've been talking a lot about Quebec, and, you know, let's face it, the parent company of this place is Quebec Corps, but we don't shy away from criticizing Quebec it, when it deserves it. And, and I think that there is an inward-looking thing. I remember when I worked there, you could criticize anything in the world, but if as an outsider or perceived outsider you criticized Quebec, your views were immediately unwelcome. Exactly. So what's the solution to this? I guess the only solution is to keep criticizing Quebec when it's necessary to speak out and say things. And uh, I was certainly attacked and I fell into a depression and I lost my job. But I think I would do it all over again because, I mean, that's the responsibility, that's the moral responsibility of journalists in a democracy. We have to say these things. So it's up to people like you and other journalists to do this. All right, Jen, thanks so much, and thank you for the book. Uh, it is called Out of the Blue, and you can pick it up. It's self-published. It's a good read, and you can help Jen by buying it and annoy the Globe and Mail by keeping it on the bestsellers list. Hey, they fired her, folks. Annoy the Globe and Mail. Buy the book.